Hi. Lead generating funnel is all about creating leads out of early, nascent, vague interest. For those who argue that the funnel is dead, they need to read these five excellent articles that I'm going to walk you through today. A lead generating funnel is all about nurturing prospects and creating leads, and I'll show you how. Here is the essence of what five B2B authors argue about lead generating funnel, with which, by the way, I totally agree. Number one, content is all about progressing the buyer, not selling, or at least not yet. Test, measure, and refine your tactics. Don't be afraid to build many steps into the nurture. It's not normally like a website where you want to limit the number of clicks with a lead generating funnel. You can afford to have multiple steps if you need them. Go hard with those steps when their interest is high and then back off. Recycle leaked prospects. Let me show you why and a little of how. Normally when I present articles produced by others, I use them, synthesize them, honour them, but then I disagree with them and, and I, I make a different point. Today I'm going to break that rule because frankly I do agree with these articles and I found some of them to be fantastic. They're arguing a point that I would also want to argue, and so unlike in previous shows, I'm actually not going to disagree with them. Let's start with the first of those. The first blog we wanted to show you is How to Map Lead Nurturing Content to Each Stage in the Sales Cycle by Corey Wainwright. It's on the HubSpot blog. Now, right from the get-go, the title has me, Each Stage in the Sales Cycle. Now, I'd rather say the buyer's journey, but I'm, I'm going to forgive them for that because they do specifically what they said in the title. That is, they talk very specifically about content built for each stage. They build a great argument for why you need to match your content to the sales stages or to the buying cycle. They talk about uh, understanding the buyer's journey, they call it buying cycle. They've simplified it here. I'm not going to fight them on this because, frankly, the key point about the buyer's journey is not the names of the stages that we use at Mass Marketing but about progression. Build content or tactics to move buyers to the next stage. And that's exactly what they've done here. Now, they give, I, I thought when I saw this rather simplified example that this was going to be a B2C argument. It actually isn't because in, their, in the example that they give from J.D. Edwards, scroll down a little, um, here we go. They walk through a series of emails or a series of content and emails from J.D. Edwards, clearly a B2B proposition. And it is a good example. It really brings to life the points that they've made earlier. I am going to recommend that you read this article. Our second article is B2 Bento. Love the name. Lead Nurturing Strategy in Plain English. Now it's a complex infographic and it almost turned me off at that point. I was, I was kind of losing interest in viewing this because the detail was so substantial. I don't think it lends itself very well to a, an infographic. It's just too much content on here. But let's forgive them that sin for the moment and talk more about the substance than the form. It's not bad and it is worth a read. It stops at handover to sales and I think that that's a bit of a cop-out to be honest. Marketing needs to recognise that its job is not just to build content for marketing's tactics, but to build content for the entire journey, including the content that sales needs. So I think it's a little bit of a cop-out in that regard, but again, if you forgive them the busy sin and you forgive them the stopping halfway sin, it is a good read. It's a well-constructed uh, 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 infographic and it's, it, um, um, it's drawn from content from Brian Carroll, whose work we have learned to respect and trust. Okay, let's go to our third. A Beginner's Guide to Lead Nurturing by Shannon Good. Now, clearly the title is going to put me off because most of you are pretty sophisticated marketers and I try not to give you too much baby stuff. Baby stuff. However, it's pretty good. I particularly like the email sequence. So, you know, they've got some web image issues to fix here, but that's not the, the uh, topic of this blog or this uh, podcast. Sorry, this not a podcast. What am I saying? I watch too, or listen to too many podcasts. It's not the topic of this um, blog, my show, 
um, and you're a sophisticated audience. But let me just use the examples here. So a basic download form followed by a series of emails which they argue the content of and the task. Read it in detail, it is worth reading. Here's the point that I wanted to get to. Get a look at this flow. There are seven emails in this flow. And that's okay because they're selling an expensive product. And they've got them fairly well paced. Now you could argue that you could go even faster. They've gone for three days, maybe test going daily or five days. Start though with this as a good uh, example, I think, of a well-constructed campaign. Our fourth one, mid-funnel lead nurturing mistakes. Now I'm a little frustrated here because Steve Gershik's a mate of mine. Um, I've done a little bit of work with Steve uh, at a conference he was co-sponsor for. He's a good guy and he's smart. Um, this is pretty light content though, so uh, with uh, greatest amount of respect and love for Steve, uh, and he's referencing here John Miller, who's a um, super smart guy, whose work I respect. Um, this is not the one to read. I'm going to go on to the fifth one, and I'm using this, I'm showing this one here just because it was shared so often. It didn't come up so much in Google, but it was shared a lot according to BuzzSumo. Now, the net conclusion of this article is that you need to build in action-based triggers. And I think that that's an important point. So, the net of all of those articles, this is another one I do recommend that you have a read of. It's not terribly long. Um, but automate repetitive tasks and particularly go for action-based triggers, good advice. And I'm going to wrap that into my net conclusions, which I'll do now. If you've watched my previous shows, you know that the normal mode is that I will synthesize and honor what's been said by the articles and then put my own spin on it. I'm not doing that this week because frankly, I agree with what they've said. So here are the five conclusions that those authors and I all think that make sense in a lead generating funnel. Content is all about progressing the buyer, so write it that way. Write each piece to get them to the next stage, not to sell your product yet, stage by stage by stage, softly, softly. Secondly, test, measure and refine your tactics. Wherever you can, do an A-B test, do two of them. Don't be afraid to build many steps into the nurture program if you need many steps. Now don't make it longer than it needs to be, but neither make it shorter than it needs to be. There's no magic number. If you need three steps or you need seven steps, they're both good numbers. How many steps do you think it'll take to move a buyer to each next stage? If yours is a really complex purchase, it's gonna take more than if it's a really simple one. When their interest has been established, that if they've first subscribed or they first registered, they first downloaded, whatever the reaction was that got them into your little mini funnel, go hard, go quick. Don't slow down. If their interest is high, feed them. Then back off. Recycle your leaked prospect. Basically, if they don't move forward, have tactics in your nurture program to put them into, content to put them into when their interest has, you tried to accelerate their interest and you failed, back off but keep them nurtured. I hope you really got value out of those articles and the synthesis. I enjoyed reading them, as you could probably tell from, from listening to my voice. Now, if you enjoyed that, then the odds are pretty good that you would enjoy our other shows. We produce them every week for you, specifically for you. How can you get them? So there's a couple of ways. Go to uh, Funnel Vision, try again, go to mathmarketing.com forward slash blog or go to youtube.com forward slash math marketing, whatever your preference of consuming and subscribe at one of those two places. And what that means is that every week you'll get immediate notification as soon as we post to the latest show. Be amongst the first to receive it. Now if you have already, can I really encourage you to invite a colleague or friend. Um, your feedback and your, your enthusiasm in promoting this to other colleagues is what motivates us and helps us to continue to invest uh, in this show, so I'd be so grateful if you could do that. If you've done both of those and you'd like us to cover another topic, here's an email, funnelvision at mathmarketing.com. Send us an email, tell us what you'd like covered. I'd love to cover a topic that you request. I am getting some great requests. I'd love to hear one from you. That's it, again, I hope you got value. Lots more lined up for next week. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing. Our thanks this week to Bill and Biona for research and in turn at Math Marketing, to our five authors, Corey Erendon, Brian Carroll, Shannon Good, Steve Gershik, and Business and Community. 
Thanks this week to Annika Dobby for her amazing production. My name's Hugh McFarlane. It's been my absolute pleasure to script and present this week's show.